Thursday, everybody. Welcome to another episode of You Heard Them Chanting in the Background, and you should all be to TNA, TNA, TNA Wrestling with the Insiders. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We're heading into a holiday weekend for some, um, and uh, well, for a lot of people, actually. Uh, and yeah, um, it's, a, it's a great night to be here. We've got a cool card coming up. Um, one thing I do want to mention before I start. Um, and, I, and I would like to have all of you, you know, uh, keep uh, this person, obviously, in your thoughts and in your prayers as well. You know, we always, um, you know, we're, we're a community, we're a family. We always get behind someone when they're having uh, some troubles. And I did get this DM uh, from Alex Loves Demi and Lauren. So uh, they are a part of our uh, of our uh, Twitter community. And uh, uh, he just uh, wanted to say, please keep me and my family in your prayers uh, because my aunt uh, Dana is in hospice, which means she doesn't have that much longer left to live. And I have a good bond with my aunt. Um, and obviously then a couple of messages later, he said they decided to take her off oxygen. So it's a matter of time. So, um, you know, very, very sad. I, I, I've, you know, I, I, I've seen people in hospice in my lifetime and, and stuff. And it is um, God bless the nurses and the people that work in there, because that is a very difficult job. You you see death every single day of your life. And it is extremely, extremely difficult. So please keep uh, them in mind um, during this hard time uh, and, and losing their aunt. So um, I, 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 you know, that's got to be the toughest thing ever. You know, um, everybody all wishes that um, that people, um, you know, when, when it's their time that they go in the night in the best way possible. And that, you know, obviously people have, have passed in their sleep and things like that. And that's when you see a lot of things that are, you know, passed away restfully or, uh, you know, uh, when they, when they, when they talk about that and, and when, when this happens, it's, uh, it's very, very hard. And I'm sure a lot of you can relate. Uh, so please keep them in your, in your thoughts and prayers. Uh, I, I would really appreciate that. Um, all right. So welcome in. And uh, yeah, we've, um, this is going to be our last show for the week, obviously, because it is a holiday weekend. Uh, Easter's coming up, of course, on Sunday. Uh, so if you celebrate Easter in Enjoy the weekend. Uh, I know I've got my family coming in. My uh, my daughter's coming in, her partner, uh, and my other daughter's coming home. So we're going to have a couple Easter dinners. Actually, my wife's making one tomorrow, and then I'm going to have another one at my mom's on Easter Sunday. So um, going to be a, a good weekend, a good family weekend. Easter's usually a good holiday because the weather sometimes is starting to break. Not around here necessarily. It's still cold and rainy and snowy where Jeff is. Uh, so, you know, but Hopefully we'll get to spring eventually. And uh, but yeah, we're happy to be here. Uh, it's another stop along the way to what these guys are doing. Two big announcements from them today, by the way. Um, Ace Austin has been re-signed. So Ace Austin is in the fold. Uh, fantastic. I loved his tweet. He said he wants that title. He wants the heavyweight championship. And he said, you know, he meant it when he said it. Uh, so that's awesome. I love to hear that spirit coming from him. Um, and also. Uh, AJ Francis uh, is signed now on through the end of the year. So they have him until the end of the year, at least. Uh, so two big signings for TNA. So that's very cool, Jeff. And uh, we've got some good stuff happening on the show tonight, too. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think that those are two very big signings. And I'm going to address the elephant in the room and talk about the two big departures, um, seemingly uh, Chris Saban and Alex Shelley. Um, looks like they've reportedly finished up their um obligations with tna um you know hate to see them go i wish them the best wherever they end up next um but yeah i'm just kind of bummed out that they're not going to be around but i'm excited for the one thing i'll say is this when it comes to situations like this it gives an opportunity for other people to step up and you know maybe that happens in this case maybe you see more from a guy like Kevin Knight going forward or, yeah. um, you know, whoever they're Leon Slater. I mean, there, there are so many people that I, I can think of that might benefit from, from some more uh, time on screen. So, um, you know, gotta, gotta take the good with the bad and, um, you know, happy, uh, that, that, uh, the Ace Austin resigned. Um, I think he's. I think he's the future. He's the he president. Really so, uh, yeah. kudos to him. Good. Good for him. And uh, yeah, AJ Francis staying through the end of the year is, is pretty big. So, I want to see who he ends up going up against because we know he want 
we know we won't be against uh, Joe Hendry for the rest of the year. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. In case you didn't know, as what Jeff was talking about, there is an article according to PW Insider. Saturday night's tapings in Philadelphia marked the final TNA performances, at least for now, um, of Alex Shelley and Chris Saban. Uh, PWI said TNA held an emotional backstage sendoff for the veteran duo. Whose contracts are up April first. Report was confirmed and uh, add while the door has been kept open for them to return, they are not currently expected to remain with TNA. So um, they, um, you know, they can really probably, they can probably punch their ticket almost anywhere they want. Um, New Japan Pro Wrestling, if they want to tackle something like that, uh, obviously uh, AEW, uh, WWE would be, they'd be a big addition for WWE's tag team division. Uh, if they want to look at them, they, they're just going to be great anywhere they go. Uh, so it, it will. It, it's a big loss. Yeah, there's no getting around it. It's a big loss. They were a huge draw for a lot of people, uh, and it's going to be sad to see them go. But like Jeff said, we have to look to the future, uh, and the future is Ace Austin. The future is, at least till the end of the year, AJ Francis. The future is Moose, obviously, your world champion, Jordan Grace. Um, they are the building blocks. They are the ones that TNA is going to be build, uh, building around. So, um, so yeah, uh, the, you know, obviously some news there, some good and some bad. So, uh, all right, cool. Let's move on. Uh, we're getting uh, – Derek's talking about me getting my breathing right. Yeah, dude, I, I have to start learning. Yeah, because <laughs> they're not – I'm not forgetting right. about that. I'm not forgetting about it. I made a promise, and I plan to keep it. And the promise, of course, was if we get to 4K, I was to wear a uh, the Lucha question mark mask uh, doing the WrestleMania broadcast two nights. And I promised it. So I'm going to I'm going to do it. I'm, I'm keeping my promise. Uh, so, I, you know, I, I will have to uh, to learn how to talk and, and br I should probably wear it a few days ahead of time and, you know, just get used to it. <laughs> uh, but I'm keeping my promise. So. You know, you can never say that I don't keep my promise. But listen, uh, the wrestling coming up is so exciting, man. And, and Mania is looking like it's going to be one for the ages. Uh, so I, I I can't wait, man. With everything that's going on there, I cannot wait. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, bottom line, though, is we have nothing uh, for the rest of the weekend. So nothing on Sunday, of course. Uh, it is Easter Sunday. So no between the ropes. We'll be taking that off. And then, of course, uh, Monday is Raw. And then the uh, Bray Wyatt documentary is Monday. I don't know when it's going to be premiered there or not not saying um there's little snippets being given here and there uh um uh kyle shared uh, a piece of artwork that i have never seen before on his twitter today uh of the fiend so you're gonna start to see some things starting to come out and, and i think that that documentary is going to bring a lot of that so um so yeah it's uh monday's gonna be tough monday's gonna be tough all right let me welcome some people in we'll get going uh clown is here hassin is here uh, Rebellion coming on April 20th. Yep. Uh, Dylan is here. Derek is here. Uh, Thursday, Happy Thursday off for Good Friday tomorrow, so let's enjoy it. Uh, Jahira is here. Uh, Andrea is here. What's up, Andrea? James Chadwick's in the house. Damian Robinson is here. Uh, Dylan Dork Knight is here. What's up? John Kessler is here. Uh, we've got Brandon. We've got uh, Andrea is here. What's, how are you, Andrea? Hope you're well. Um, we've got, uh, let me see if we got anybody else or am I caught up? Clown, age, uh, age Obson is here as well. Age Obson is here also. Uh, cool. Well, welcome in everybody. And, uh, we are going to get to tonight's card, uh, talk about what we've got going on for tonight, Jeff. Uh, so yeah, uh, let's uh, pull up the card, huh? There it is. There it is. Jeff, we're going to hear from, uh, mostly of the two. Now, don't get me wrong. AJ Francis and the good news and stuff about him signing. But, Jeff, I want to hear what Rich Swan exactly has to say and, and why he aligned himself with AJ Francis and, of course, betrayed my boy, Joe Hendry. I'm so looking forward to this because I want Rich Swan to just be absolutely savage. I just... Yeah. I want him to be savage in this, but yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to this and seeing what the explanation is uh, for such treachery um, in the wrestling world. But uh, but yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. I want to see what they what they come up with. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. I want to I want to see what goes on with that. Uh, Andrew Stevens is here. Hello, Andrew. How are you? There's some college basketball going on. I'm, I'm sure Jeff has like a, a one eye on the Clemson who is leading. I yep. think at halftime. Got, go. got it on right to my side here. So if I stumble on words or if I get caught in the thought, it's just because I'm trying to process a couple different things at once. 
There you go. There you go. Uh, I'm waiting for my Celtics to win one more game and they clinch the entire Eastern Conference because uh, they're that far ahead of everybody else. So they win one more game and they clinch the whole East. Uh, so uh, hoping that uh, that happens. Obviously, I think today is also the um, the opening night of Major League Baseball uh, as well around the league. So uh, I think is it tomorrow night? No, I think it's tonight. Yeah, I think you're right. Mike, uh, yeah, I'm pr- I'm pretty sure I saw it was tonight. Um, yeah, yeah, I think it is. The Yankees already played today. They uh, they won five four over the Astros, so Yankee fans are going to be happy. And um, yeah, the, oh, the Dodgers did win. Ooh, there you go. They played earlier. They played today. They won. There you go. Seven to one. Shinhei Otani reaches three times in ho- in debut as Dodgers. Well, there you go. The, they have a little bit of a scandal going on with him, uh, but uh, he, he played well. All right. Let's see. We've got. We will hear again, Josh. We keep getting this every week from from uh, from Josh. Jeff is uh, is is. We keep hearing things from Josh Alexander. Uh, so he keeps coming out and uh, and talking and uh, and we'll see what's going to happen with Josh. It's interesting uh, to you know kind of wondering where uh, Josh is going, but you, you kind of have to believe it's it's going to be another uh, match with Hammerstone is where this is leading here. Yeah, I. I think those two are destined for uh for another encounter. Um yeah. I, I just think it's I gotta see it at this point, especially with Hammerstone talking his talk last time. So uh I gotta see what's what's gonna happen here. I think I think he might want the title, but I think Hammerstone might have some other plans for him first. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Uh we've got Eddie Edwards. Versus Mike Bailey. So this little feud between these groups is still going on. Uh, and of course, you know, listen, whenever any of them, whether it's Eddie Edwards or Moose or or Myers, when any of them are together, you know what you're going to get. Uh, you're probably going to get shenanigans and someone else is going to get involved here. So uh, Mike Bailey better have some backup here, Jeff. Yeah, he better have Trent Seven at the ready. Um, <laughs> he doesn't. It might be some problems, but I think I think we're gonna get this, and then we'll end up getting a uh, a, a nice tag team title match between Speedball Mountain and uh, Eddie Edwards and Brian Myers of the system. Yeah, I would think so. Yep. Uh, Andy Johnson, hello, Andy. How are you? And then, of course, we have uh, Steve Macklin and Chris Saban. So, again, we talked about it earlier. It's all over the news in wrestling. Um, we're going to get these last few matches from uh, from Saban and Shelley. So this is uh, kind of goodbye matches for them. And uh, so Steve Macklin and Chris Saban, this should be a banger. Uh, both very, very good at what they do. And, you know, when the veterans leave and, and, and they're walking away from a certain uh, promotion, many, many times they put over people uh, who they really think are going to be really good in the future. So I would kind of assume that that's maybe what happens tonight. We'll have to see. Um, but this might be uh, Saban's way of, of, of giving that little push to uh, to Steve Macklin, Jeff. Yeah, I, I think, you know, it's obviously we, we mentioned it before, it's tough. Um, with the machine guns leaving, but I think it's an opportunity for new talent to step up and and kind of aspire to be what Alex Shelley and Chris Saban have been to TNA. Um, they're legends, they're Hall of Famers, and you can't fill those roster spots. But what you can do is you know just be the best you possible and, and just try to be half as dedicated and um, just perfecting their craft um just continuing to do what they did to improve themselves and put the put tna on the map so um yeah it's tough i think he might um i I think he might put macklin over uh which is another name that we didn't even mention we were talking about the present and the future of the company so uh so yeah i think i think i agree with you there Yep. Macklin could literally be like right up there with Moose as a top heel uh, for them in the company. Uh, and no doubt he's, he's certainly got that talent. Um, did you guys hear Becky mention uh, t- TNA in her interview? Uh, my goal is to get to TNA because they were treating the women's division way better than WWE. I did not. Wow. That's crazy. Wow. Guys, we, we say that a lot. 
Um, you know, but, but obviously you don't hear it from outside. You know, a lot of times talent doesn't really like to talk about other talent um, because, you know, they all know, uh, they all kind of run in the same circles. They know one another a little bit, but wow, that's, uh, that's very interesting. Very interesting. Uh, Chad, I did see your comment. Oh yeah. Uh, what's up? No impact wrestling for me tonight. Cause I'm celebrating my 30th birthday. Happy birthday 30 let's... years old. Let's go. Let's go. Happy 30th, dude. That's amazing. That's awesome. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. Uh, I can't. I don't even know if I can remember back that far. <laughs> Uh, bonus baby says MCMG always seem to circle uh, back around to TNA. We'll see them again down the road. Uh, 30 is dirty, says A. Jobson. All right, Jeff, we have this is going to be a lot of fun, man. We've got an 8 4 1 match to determine the number one knockouts contender here. Listen to the talent we've got here. Speaking of the women, they're going to probably get the main event tonight, guys. No doubt with this. Uh, Havoc, Masha. Alicia Edwards. Alicia Edwards is in this, and we've been talking about her maybe getting gold at some point. Uh, don't be surprised if you don't see Myers and you don't see Moose and you don't see them down there. Eddie, of course, supporting her with this. Uh, Jody Threat, Danny Luna, Zaya Brookside, Ash by Elegance. Also, you would think is going to be a bit of a favorite here. And Rosemary as well. This is going to be a lot of fun. Uh, this is something you'd think you'd see on a pay-per-view. And uh, we're getting it tonight on this show, Jeff. This is going to be a blast. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. And I don't know, Joe, do you think we need to go over the rules of the of the uh, 841? Yeah, Matt. we probably probably should uh, because I, I, I actually could use a bit of a refresher. It's been a while. All right. Okay, sorry about that. My sound over here. It's all good. Um, all right, so eight four one match. So basically, um, starts out as an eight knockout tag match. So that's why we have the teams, um, and then the winning team will face off in a four way match with the winner of that match becoming the number one contender for the knockouts world title. So it starts off as an eight knockout tag match. Then the winning team faces off against each other and the winner becomes the number one contender. Man, this is going to be crazy. You know what I'm a little bit surprised at here, Jeff, is why Killer Kelly isn't in this. That's a yeah. little surprising to me. And that might be something to watch because a lot of people were saying there might be a little bit of animosity, a little bit of a breakup there at some point coming up. Watch that this doesn't lead to that because Masha got picked for this and Kelly didn't. Uh, so just keep your eyes on that. Just something to keep your eyes on. This is going to be a fun night, man. Really fun night uh, of wrestling tonight. Glad you're all aboard uh, and you're on board with us here. All right, guys, we got about eight minutes left. You know what time it is. It's that time of the week. We talk about uh, – we're going to talk a little bit about food here. So let us know in the chat. What did y'all have good to eat? What did you eat good today? Let us know. Uh, get everybody hungry so they're all paying attention and, you know, their stomachs are growling and maybe a little drool coming down the side, depending on what you're talking about. Uh, we don't care what meals you're talking about, breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks. It doesn't matter. We like it all. Uh, so let us know what you had good for dinner or whatever it was you ate today. Let us know. In the meantime, I've got a question for all of you for tonight that I'm going to rattle off. It is a little kind of pertaining to food, uh, but, but, you know, its own kind of thing. So just keep in mind, I will have the question of the week for you uh, as we finish up tonight. Jeff, did you get a chance to eat? Or are you, you eating now? Or how did, how did, how did it go for you today? <laughs> so I did get a chance to eat. Um, I actually had uh, Little Caesars. Ooh, okay. I tried to do uh, crazy puffs things. Yeah. Uh, they're they're good. They're as they advertised. Good, yeah. Yes. Nice. Yes. They're nice. really good. So. I always liked them. And and you know, you can 
you you have people who like their choices, right? They like their dominoes. Somebody always likes a, a one of one or the other. And I remember when I was a uh, I was managing a Radio Shack. Oh my God, long time ago in the nineties. Um, and there was a um. Now this goes to show you how old this was. Um, I was in a mall in like a little strip mall, and it was this little tiny Radio Shack. Right, it was in the end of the strip mall, next door to me. There was a beauty salon next door to me. After that, there was a video rental store. And next door to that was a pizza, uh, was a Little Caesars. So it was fantastic, man. We were so dead in that store because we were in such a dead area that sometimes we'd go hours and hours between customers. Um, I would literally take my break and I would go down to the to the video place and I'd rent two movies, uh, which were like a dollar or two a piece back then. And I'd go to Little Caesars and I'd get that little pan pan that they would have. So you'd get two slices of pizza and a drink and stuff. It was nice. It was cheap. Um, and I'd get that and I'd go back to my store and I'd throw the, v- the videotapes in the, the TVs we had on display. And I'd sit there and watch movies completely uninterrupted. <laughs> That's how dead the store was. Uh, but uh, but I, I always liked Little Caesars, man. I always thought their, their pizza was good. And they're making all kind of fancy stuff now. They have that pretzel crust pizza, too, which looked like it'd be pretty good. I didn't get a chance to try it. Good. Is it good? It's yeah. Nice. yeah. I, I thought it might be. I thought it, I thought it would be good. All right, Derek saying shrimp tacos tonight. They're also selling family size honeycomb cereal boxes at the store for one dollar. I love honeycomb, dude. I really do. Finished eating um, uh, some barbecue baked chicken tenders and rice for dinner a few minutes ago. Damien says minced beef hot pot, says James Chadwick. I know someone who went to an AEW show last night. There were only 3,500 people in attendance. Ooh, really? Wow, I watched a lot about a, a lot of that too, actually, and I, I couldn't really tell. I, I always try to look to see if you could see the blacked out areas, um, or if you could see like cloth and stuff over the seats. Wow, that's really low if that's true. Uh, clown mozzarella sticks with Chick fil A sauce, very nice. Damn you, Joe, you mentioned the cream sickle Wendy's Frosty. So, I, oh, they're so good. I had one too. They're so good, dude. Um, they're really good. I know they just take their vanilla and mix it, the flavoring in, but oh, they're so good. What the hell are them? A uh, big old bowl of mac and cheese. Honey barbecue chicken tenders and rice, says Andrew. Uh, what is crazy, crazy? Who had crazy puffs? Oh, Jeff. Jeff, you got to yeah, tell James. I sent, the- I sent the picture to James, so he, he's responding right now. He's looking at it right now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I ate pizza and salad and then for snack donuts, and then I ate dinner, uh, rice, chicken, and bananas and avocado. And never have had Little Caesars, but they have these new pepperoni puffs that I want to try. That's what Jeff must have had. Yeah, there you go. Yep. Yep. Pizza Hut. The pizza is so greasy. We have a pizza Hut by me still, and I love it. I love it. Uh, Rice and tacos for lunch. Uh, Dynamite did 747K in the ratings. Ooh, yikes. That's not good. Alicia. Hello, Alicia. How are you? Hey, Joe, Jeff, and Familia. I had a big bacon and egg sandwich. There you go. A little breakfast. I like it. Delicious. I like it. Chicken burrito bowl for lunch. I'm having a Swedish meatballs stuff for dinner with a bottle of brisk strawberry melon for dinner tonight. Tonight. Uh, James says they look yummy. <laughs> They're delicious. I had um, a homemade piece of chicken and I had these, those little. They're like little square cut potatoes, little square cut like fried potatoes uh, that my wife made. So that was my dinner for today. Uh, rotisserie chicken omelet. With Gruyere cheese, spinach, fresh garlic, red onions with cream cheese, and fresh parsley, says A. Jobson. A. Jobson just swinging in for the win at the end of it. <laughs> just whoop and just swinging in for the win. Um, Sh- Hello, Sherry. How are you? Uh, did you see that McDonald's is going to be selling Krispy Kreme donut? Oh, my God. Are you serious? No. That can't be true. Oh. That, that, that would just add like that's literally that that they should call that heart attack Donald's then because between all their that food gives, the way it is that gives me a reason <laughs> to stay at my current job <laughs> <laughs> or right across the street from the McDonald's I wouldn't be surprised by that because it seems like a lot of these smaller type businesses not Krispy Kreme I'm not saying you're small but it seems like a lot of these dessert businesses um <laughs> or breakfast like uh like treats like sweet treat businesses are are starting now to form alliances with other ones so like um you're seeing like i know the same company who owns auntie ann's pretzels uh also owns cinnabon 
um, and also owns an ice cream uh, place too. Uh, I forget the name of the ice cream place. They are amazing uh, ice cream too. When you go get them, they, they sell chocolate cake cookie dough batter. No, chocolate cake batter. Ice cream is the best ice cream I think I've ever tasted. Um, but all those are, are together as one. And now they're starting to sell each other's products. Uh, so, oh, man, dude. And Speaking I mean, Chris, of- cream in the, in the Northeast because I grew up, I mean, where I grew up in the South, we didn't have Dunkin' Donuts. We only had Krispy Kreme. And there's just something about that hot light. When that hot light hits, dude, it's just, just go ahead and just sign me up for like two dozen. But, um, <laughs> but, but no, I, I'm, I hope we get Krispy Kremes in the Northeast because we need it. Jeff, the first time I ate in a Krispy Kreme, right, there was one right outside of a T-Mobile when we were having a meeting. And we'd have yeah. meetings there every morning. It was in Center City, Philadelphia. And um, we would go, and it was a big, full-size one. So I went in there, and they had a different donut every day. The day I went in, they had key lime, and I love key lime. So I ordered, of course, that, and then I got coffee. Now, I'm not a big coffee drinker, but I was very tired because we had to be up super early. Um, so I got a coffee, and I, I said, okay, you know, sugar, cream, and sugar. I'm expecting them to give me sugar packets and stuff. You know, I get up there, and and I'm like, okay, and I'm, the, the woman's waiting. I mean, I'm like, well, yeah, where's, you know, are the sh- where's the sugar? She goes, oh, no, 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 no. She goes, we have this. They literally put the donut glaze in a dispenser, and you dispense the donut glaze into your coffee. I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. It was the best coffee I ever had, and I am not a coffee drinker. Uh, that was probably 90,000 calories, but it was amazing. <laughs> it was amazing. Uh, Derek just said the hot light is better than sex, Jeff. Don't ever tell your girlfriend that, Derek. Um, <laughs> oh, my gosh. The show is starting. Uh, let me see if I missed anyone with food. I think I got everybody. Hello, Brandon Barnes. Uh, Sherry Krispy Kreme's all right. Um, that's what we call at least that's what we call squares of potato fried up. Uh, what was that? I missed that clown. What do you call it? Um, where's your comment? Pepper steak says Sherry. Nice home fries. Yeah. Yeah. They're little, they're more cubed. Home fries are l- sometimes smaller cut, but yeah, I guess you could say that probably we have a pizzeria on every corner here in Buffalo. Try the Arby's King Hawaiian brown sugar bacon thing. Bang it. That, that's a whole bacon sandwich, isn't it? It's just yeah. all bacon. Yeah. Yeah, I saw that and I wasn't sure how, how to take that. I'm like, I like bacon, but I wasn't really sure that I would like a whole bacon sandwich. Um, may, you know, I guess it's kind of like a big BLT. With the M- Motor City Machine Guns done with TNA, what's next for Saban and Shelly? Nah, I don't know. I really don't know what they want to do. I know there was some, there, they were mentioning some things about visiting uh, New Japan. So maybe that's that would they would enjoy doing that. Uh, Nuke the Glazed, a 7 Eleven Glazed for 30 seconds, same experience. We have a Paula's Donuts here. We have Duck Donuts now, uh, like right outside my store. It's literally a walking distance from my store. Duck Donuts. They're good. Yeah. Very different um, because they're cake donuts, and they're very heavy. Um, But but they are really good. They have a peanut butter chocolate one that's out of this world. Like some of the flavors are just fantastic. Um, My daughter and son love the maple bacon. The maple bacon's Uh, amazing. Yeah, Yeah, it's Uh, good. Yeah, the maple bacon's really good. Um, the, the thing with them, though, I realize, Jeff, the duck donuts, you need to eat those right away. When you get them in that box and they're hot, um, you yep. you want to just slam them down right right then and there because when they get a little cold, yeah, you can reheat them in the microwave, but it's not the same. Um, so, uh, but yeah, and and you and it's what I guess it's in a way it's good for you because you you don't really want to eat a ton of them because they are heavier and you eat like one or two and you're like you're done. Wow, they, are they starting with this? Wow. Holy cow, I thought this would have been the main event. A lot of the women are already in there, too. Man, we're uh, we're getting right in here. And, of course, Ash by Elegance gets brought in last. Uh, I, liked ice, I like iced coffee. Well, you know, speaking of drinks, that was my question of the night, and I didn't even have to see any of this. We ask you all about favorite foods. Give me a favorite beverage. Give me a favorite beverage. Could be coffee, tea, soda, a kind of soda. But if you're going to name a soda or anything like that, tell me what flavor. 
And it could be we we could do a little adult beverage too. If you like an adult beverage, little alcohol, we could talk about that as well. Uh, let me know in the chat what is your favorite beverage of choice if you were on a deserted island. Look at Ash. What is going on here? She's got an ice pack. <laughs> what is up with this? I kind of don't think she can compete here, Jeff. It doesn't certainly look like it. It doesn't look like it. <laughs> she, she can't have her face touched for 72 wow. hours. Wow. <laughs> All right, so, so we're getting a replacement. All right, of, she's not wrestling, so we're getting a replacement here. Steph Delander. Wow. Steph Delander. All right. Oh, let's go. Steph Delander. She's back. People giving me their favorite drinks. Let's go. What do we got? Um, Long Island iced tea, baby, says bonus. Apple Tango, says James Chadwick. Delaware Punch, which is now discontinued because Derek drank it all away. <laughs> Clown says Natty Ice. Damien says Wild Cherry Pepsi. John says favorite drink is half and half lemonade and iced tea. Thinking all of, of retro food that we don't eat now. And I wanted to ask anyone if you used to have sugar sandwiches. My UK crew might know about that. I have never had that. Don't even know what it is. Brisk Strawberry Melon. Uh, Lucas Aid Original. Pepsi and iced tea. Uh, Mark's here. Maybe uh, um, uh, if you missed it, if you discussed it, what are your thoughts on New Japan Global Championship? If I remember correctly, they created the belt in replacement of their United States UK Championship belt. Carmel Macchiato. Devon Dudley said that his son is done with AEW, heading to NXT. Oh, there you go. Okay. Um, butter and sugar toast as a kid. Oh, late. this will be interesting. Rosemary. Oh, oh and wow. Rosemary and Havoc are on opposite sides of the ring. Mm -hmm. Wow. Oh, well, Rosemary just used her to, <laughs> to, to knock heads with Steph Delander. All right. Running late, I got addicted to a dermatology show. Been watching it all. We binge watching it all week. Looks like Steph is back. Yes, hello Heather. Uh, Jason Dawn, cherry lime Kool Aid. Oh yeah! <laughs> Remember the Kool Aid Man commercials? Big Kool Aid Big Man. Kool -Aid man, man oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah! Oh yeah! <laughs> Any zero sugar soda and energy drink? Mocha frap at Starbucks. James Sadwick said he saw the set spoiler. James, tisk tisk tisk. I know no he did. Spoilers. Didn't. That's all right. It's all good. Diet Doctor Pepper is my poison of choice. Sadly, I saw a spoiler about Steph Deland. Just still excited this year. I wonder if um, what? So what's the news about uh, Ash? Is Ash hurt? I didn't say anything about her. Is, is Ash hurt? I don't know unless she finds a way to weasel in at the very end. That could very well be. Uh, Crown Royal and Coke. Um, Santino Marella should be competing. Um, but, but, but butter bread with sugar in a sandwich. I Wow, I've never heard of that. I need it for breakfast. I mean, it doesn't sound bad. I like French toast. I eat a lot of French toast for breakfast. It's good. Um, actually, I used to eat sugar sandwiches. My cousin used to eat ketchup. Say, I've heard of that. 
Yep. I've heard it. I, I, I would eat, uh, when I was younger, mayonnaise sandwiches. I'd literally take two pieces of bread, put mayo in between, and I would eat it like that. I like mayonnaise. I'm going out on a limb here and say Danny Luna is winning. Okay. Yeah, I mean, we'll have to see this for the number one contender. But like Jeff said, I wouldn't be surprised if Ash found her way into this uh, into this match and somehow found a way to get a pin here. I vote for Rosemary's team. Ooh. Jody Threat with some big, look at this, over and over with these clotheslines. Joe, so what's your favorite drink? Man, I if I'm gonna go alcohol, which I don't drink very much, but I like I like sweeter drinks. Um, so uh, during the holidays, um, I will have a whiskey, uh, an amaretto sour. Mm, okay, which I like a lot. Um, as far as like everyday drink, I am a ginger ale fan. I like ginger ale. Um, I've, I've had all, all different brands and all different kinds. Um, I, I've even had some spicy ginger ales that have a little bit more of a bite, but, uh, but I'm a, I'm a ginger ale guy. I like ginger ale. How about you? So quite simple for me. If it's if it's an adult beverage, mm -hmm. I'm a Moscow Mule. Okay. All day. Okay. Uh, you got it. You got to tell me what that is. <laughs> so some people make them different ways. Some people put gin. Some people put vodka. Okay. Then you have a uh, ginger beer Ooh, and a little okay, yeah. lime. Yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. Okay. Um, but favorite favorite drink, cherry limeade. From Sonic. Oh, from Sonic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And now you could go get that little powder, the, the drink powder that you could throw in the water and have it. Oh man, that yeah, that's a that's such a good combination of flavors. Yeah. It really is. Um, yeah, you can't go wrong with Sonic. Sonic's uh, drinks are amazing. If I want booze, it's a rum and coke, preferably spiced rum. I'll tell you what, a little while back. Whoa! Danny Luna gets the pin. Wow! Masha Slamovich. Rosemary's team wins. Wow! Okay, Masha lost, and now we have Steph Delander, Rosemary. No, here comes Masha back in the ring. No, Masha doesn't isn't taking well to this. Masha is just trashing Danny Luna. Steph Delander's waving goodbye to Danny Luna. Well, Masha did her damage and now Masha leaves. But now That's Danny actually. Luna is out. Does Ash have a sudden uh, miraculous uh, recovery? Recovery. I want to see Jeff how the hell she's going to wrestle in that dress. <laughs> that's, what, that's what I want to see. <laughs> but I want to say about maybe eight, seven or eight years ago, um, Pepsi came out with a with a, a holiday spiced Pepsi. Oh man, she just Zaya just took out. Ash and the, and hit into her face that wasn't supposed to be touched. Uh oh. Oh no! Ash by elegance is devastated. She got hit in the face. She's just screaming right there. Oh man! Saya needs to be more in control of her faculties. <laughs> Ash just rams her off the post. No DQ in this match, so they can do whatever the heck they want. 
Ash is saying, but she hit me in the face. Oh, he throws Ash out. Ash is gone. Ash is out. Wow, so much for that. Mosh has to get ready for Shayna Baszler at GCW Bloodsport. Um, but anyway, they made a holiday spice Pepsi. And that was so good with uh, with Captain Morgan's spice rum. So good. So good. Dangerously good. Whoa, what was the way? Who was that? Matt Cardona. Matt Cardona's in there? Steph, Steph DeLander takes down Rosemary. Wow. Steph DeLander is wow. going to take on Jordan Grace. Wow. How about that finish, Matt Cardona? I remember, I, uh, listen, Matt Cardona, that's going to be a scary match for Jordan because Matt Cardona has a big history with Jordan Grace. Remember when they wrestled one another? Yep. So Matt Cardona has a big, how about he takes out Rosemary, that SOB? <laughs> so that SOB taking out Rosemary. Oh my God, Jeff. You know, we say it, we talk about it all the time, but this would be an absolutely brilliant way to bring back Sue Young and the dark side and go after Cardona. Yep. That would be, oh my God, would be amazing. Matt freaking Cardona. Macklin and the Rascals. James said, I knew that was coming. Saw that. Oh, come on. Stop reading the spoilers, guys. What's wrong with you? <laughs> You're killing it. Cardona has heat. That dude is the walking embodiment of betting on yourself. Mm -hmm. Steph wins. Woo woo. You know it. Chris Saban. Cardona's back. Wasn't he with NWA? He's been everywhere, Mark. He he goes everywhere. Yeah. He's the man. Oh boy. Hmm. I'm going to slap Cardona so damn hard he think he's a broski again. <laughs> <laughs> I want Alex's shirt. Yeah, that is kind of cool with the webs. Uh, Cardona's back. What are your all thoughts on NXT going to the UFC Apex? I didn't hear about it. I just uh, heard about it in the chat, actually, a little bit up in the chat. So uh, I, it's kind of cool. Are they going there permanently, or is it just a, like a temporary thing? Eddie Edwards and Mike Bailey tonight coming up. Um, is tonight MCMG's la final match? Un I don't think so. I don't think it's their final yet. I probably want to say next week. Ace Austin. James saying it's just for battleground. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. Are we seeing Ooh. a little bit of tension between these guys? Looking that way. Uh-oh. Yeah, this isn't good. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, it looks like this is going to be uh, coming to an end.
Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. There's trouble a brewing. Yeah, there is. Oh god, I don't want to think about that. Someone's been in the gym. <laughs> yeah, Chris Bay. <laughs> yeah, look. <laughs> he, he's a little big, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The GYV. There is trouble ahead. Yeah, it certainly looks that way. It certainly looks that way. Let's see who they're calling out here. Oh, it is Deaner. All right. It is Deaner. Remember what happened last week? Ben, um, I just saw your comment now down there, but uh yeah, I yeah, we uh I just finished watching TNA paparazzi with Kevin Nash. Classic, and then Jay Lethal debut as the Macho Man. Oh, yeah, Jay Lethal was a great Macho Man, dude. That was really, really good stuff. What's up with Diener's gear? <laughs> He's all in leather. Man. He says, I could fight one of you boys, and I could even choose who to punch in the mouth. That's not my choice. It's the people's. It's the people's choice. <laughs> All right. He said, "We're not doing this tonight." Post-apocalyptic Philadelphia. <laughs> Good lord. <laughs> <laughs> Starting to like GYV just a little bit more. <laughs> oh, Ken, Good. awesome. I love TNA a lot better than AEW or WWE. Ken, I think you're new. Welcome. Philadelphia, do you want me to punch this guy? Uh, you I think me, we're going to say. Me, <laughs> you want me to punch <laughs> this loudmouth brat? <laughs> Hey, remember, if you are new to the channel, uh, please do us a big favor. And number one, uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And number two, hit that like button as well uh, before you head out tonight. Uh, it really helps us out and helps us defeat the wicked algorithm of YouTube. Uh, so make sure you do that for us, please. The people have spoken. I mean, but what what is Diener doing here? Does he not know that he's going to end up taking on two guys? <sighs> I mean, this isn't going to work out well for him. Well, okay, it's going to be a one-on-one -on -one match, but what the hell is Diener doing? <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know what he's. Can we get some Michael Rallis, aka Riddick Moss, in TNA? That very well could happen. I'm hoping it does. I wouldn't be surprised if we see him and his wife. Uh, are they married? A girlfriend? Yeah, yeah, they're married now. I they're wouldn't. Married. Yeah, that's right. They did get married. I saw that they got married on a beach. Uh, yeah. I would not be surprised if they end up in TNA, maybe at a big event at Slammiversary this year. I wouldn't be surprised. I'd love that to see them be, both there. That would be awesome. Yeah. Yeah. What the hell did Diener do? Diener's got like a, a mohawk going on here now. Like, what is he doing? What is he? He's on the ropes, like doing a, a Hogan here. I like, what the heck is he doing? He's getting himself fired up. He's even wearing the red and yellow a little bit. I mean, what is. <laughs> 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 Inverted atomic drop. He's even using some of Hogan's moves. Bulldog. Yeah. Oh, he's going old school with it. He is. What if he started doing that character, Otis Oates? Oh, God, Jeff, I would love it. <laughs> I would love it if you wore that wig. <laughs> I would love it. Uh, when did they finally tie the knot? About two weeks. Yeah, it was, uh, they, they had it on social media. That's how I know. I saw the picture of them getting married. 
And ba, 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 ba. talking Moss is returning. He's returning to ring in the very near future. Mania weekend, I think, but not certain. Um, he's going to cost him tonight in his match. I'd be surprised if it doesn't happen. I mean, the GYV win, not surprised. It was basically a two-on-one match. So I don't know what Deaner's leaning to here. Is it, We're eventually maybe going to get someone to join him at some point. Deaner looks like he he stole a pair of the Flash's shorts and not in a good way. Yeah, I know he has the lightning bolt and everything like that. I don't know what he's doing, man. Don't know what he's doing. Andy's here. Hello, Andy. Eddie Edwards and Mike Bailey. This is what we got still to come. We want Doring. Yeah, that would be awesome. Uh, Extremely cool if that happened. Just don't know if we will get that, but uh, we'd be awesome. Josh Alexander, we're going to hear from Josh next. And there is Gia Miller. Gia Miller with Nick Nemeth. Always looking sharp is Mr. Nemeth, isn't he? Always. Always looking sharp, man. Pink floral print shirt, black suit coat. Gia needs to bring the wrestling revolver look to TNA. Oh, boy. Alex Shelley says, he. I believe in you. You can beat the system because I did it myself. Oh, man. He's at wild weight. Oh. Whoa. We're getting Nick Nemeth and Alex Shelley. I'm I'm down with that. Alex passing the torch to Nick Nemeth. Yeah, it could very well be. Yeah, it could very well be. Could very well be. These two against each other, I can die happy. <laughs> Josh is on his way to the ring. Shelly versus Nick, that's a smart booking. That's a smart to booking. <laughs> Reminded me of that commercial. That's a spicy meat the ball. I remember oh. that. Yeah, you read. <laughs> Nick Nemeth going against Alberto Patron for the vacant AAA Mega Championship. Do you think AAA put the belt on Alberto? Thinking Nick Nemeth might uh, be becoming the next belt collector. Maybe. Hate to say it, but with people leaving TNA now, Anthem effed up big time firing Scott. Well, uh, I don't know, James. We'll we'll have to see. You know, it sucks. I know it's a it's a crappy situation, but I think they'll be all right. I think they'll be all right because I think that they've got a lot of talent here. It sucks to see people leaving, some of them leaving and stuff, but I think they've got good talent here, and I think they'll be okay. Josh talking about scores being settled. He's got one to settle right now. Yeah, he does. Yes, he does. Santino Marella has given him an open contract for a match tonight. Oh. All right. Ooh, he's calling out Hammerstone. 
He's calling out Hammerstone. Calling him out. This is get your big ass down to this ring. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. So don't tell me he's scared. That's not Hammerstone. What the hell is this? Tracy Williams? Hot sauce Tracy Williams? Wow. Are we getting this right now? I don't know, dude. Yo. Yep. Man, let me find out. Josh is about to have another another banger. Wow. It Josh doesn't even have his headgear. No. He hasn't had it since Hammerstone took it, remember? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm not wearing the headgear anymore, man. Wow, what an impromptu match this is, huh? Wow. Ring of Honor TV champ, tag team champ. A lot of time in ROH. I'm lost here. Who is this dude? ROH is Tracy Williams. TNA chants. For those who want to know a little bit more. Put you a link in the chat. There you go. Jeff's got your fix. I saw TNA at the um, Atrina in Elmira where I live. I met Mickey James, got an autographed pic of her. I wish I still had it. Yeah, James is in the UK bonus, baby. Yes. Josh takes a kick to the midsection. Oh man! They both get suplexed over. What the hell is the cameraman doing here? Uh, what is yeah, going on? <laughs> what is what is with the cameraman? I wonder if one of the cameras went out. That could there, be the case. Yeah, I bet you that's what happened. And then now they switch back. There we go. The there we go. Yeah. Who met Mickey without me? Josh Alexander now tossed out onto the floor. He was in Ring of Honor, was a part of uh, the foundation. With, with Gresham. Gresham and Rhett Titus. Yep. Okay. Walking weapon chance. The foundation was awesome, says Jeff. Santino Marella. Me and James have had many conversations about the foundation and several other things with Ring of Honor, like Shane Taylor promotions. Agreed. I miss the old ROH. That used to come on really weird times for me, and I could never watch it. 
It was like super early in the morning that it would be on, and I would always end up missing it. Yeah, it did. Yeah, it did come on at a weird, weird time. It really was. It was like I remember even late for me because I stay up late, but it would come on at like two. When you say like yeah. come on at like two two thirty in the morning it was really late. Did we see who was chatting with Paul Heyman? Yeah, Drew McIntyre. Man, let me tell you, I don't say this often. That might have been one of the best Raws in maybe the last 10 years. Yeah, it was really good. And it was really well done. The ending, I mean, you couldn't have scripted a better ending with the rain coming down. And yep. The Rock just beating the crap out of Cody. and yep. Dropping all kinds of expletives and having to get bleeped out. And yep. Yeah, it was Man. really good. It was well really, done. really good. Well done. Yep. Really, really good. I like it because I had just complained on our Between the Rope show about Cody not getting mad. Yep. yep. Well, well, now after that, he better be darn good and mad. He, he, <laughs> he's going to be real mad. Yeah. Yeah. He better be good and mad. And I love the Rosemary Sue Young feud. Uh, then again, I like them both. Awesome wrestlers. Yeah, I love Rosemary. And I love Sue Young. I hope she comes back. I keep saying that a lot. Haven't watched ROH in like four months. Nowhere near the same. Uh, ROH came out at a weird time. Yeah, it was really, it was always on really, really odd times. I stayed up till 2 a.m. as a teen to watch ECW. And yeah, I used to watch it every Saturday night. That would come on late too. That would come on at like 1 a.m., I think. Late, late. But they couldn't show it any earlier because it was, they, they wouldn't have aired, they, no one would have aired it. Bully and uh, LaGreca were talking about the Cody and Rock thing, and uh, Bully was saying there was only one thing he would love to have seen more than what they did. I saw that. Yeah, I saw that. Did you see that? that? And he said he said he wanted to see a crimson, a dusty crimson mask. Yeah, uh, on on Cody. But and the, the, to their defense, other, what's that? I loved his other idea too of having a shadow in the background and and having to be Roman Reigns. Have it be Roman Reigns, kind of like he told Rock what to do, and yeah, yeah, all the psychology behind that. It was, it was cool. Yeah, the Crimson Mask thing would have been cool, but I don't. With the rain and everything, I don't know if that would have been possible anyway. It was raining really heavy, so it was gonna probably wash that, wash it off of his face. Tracy Williams, looking good. Hmm. Can Josh ever have a bad match? I, I literally don't think it's possible. I don't think it's possible. ROH stuck between a rock and a weird place. Hope they will continue to make Raw the best. Anyone remember Don Marie? Giggity. <laughs> you know what, Derek? Just for you. Just for you. Let me. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> just for you. I just ordered a new rock t-shirt for WrestleMania. My old team bring it is way too small now. You are you Heather, you better you if you you should feel lucky you're not going to that uh, show. If you walk in there wearing a rock t-shirt, oh God help you. <laughs> God help you. That'll be like a Cowboys fan going there wearing or uh, wearing their jersey to an Eagle game. Yeah, that that's gonna be you get it mobbed. By all the Cody people. Did you see the snowflake bitch tweeting Triple H, Rock, and Cody complaining about the swearing and the blood and the violence, saying they switched channels because she didn't want her grandchild to watch it? I did not. <laughs> all I'll say is buckle up. Uh, you think it's bad now? Wait till they get to Netflix. I was just about to say, when they get to Netflix, I would not be surprised if you heard some some bombs drop. Well, all bets are off on Netflix, boys and girls. <laughs> the funny thing is, when they got to 11 o'clock, and if any of you just happened to keep the show on that was on after that, in the first 10 minutes of the show they had on, there was an F-bomb. Yeah. So USA Network can do it. I think WWE is actually who doesn't want them to. And, and here's the thing. They suggested on that same show, too, that maybe they would end up doing a paywall. And... 
And you, if if adults didn't want to hear Ooh. the that looked really painful. Oh, that knee to the back. Oh man, Josh Alexander is just a savage for that one. Man, that was right between the shoulder blades. Yeah, they were saying Ooh. they might do they might do a paywall. Like if 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 parents still want their kids not to listen to the bad language. Them, they could, they could, you know, and then maybe they offer like a dollar extra paywall where if you pay the extra dollar, you get the cursing. I'm just going to be thrilled that they're not going to cut out holy shit chance anymore. Yeah, I mean, that's ridiculous. That's horrible, dude. You can't hear anything. It's like, holy bleep, holy bleep, holy. I can't, I hate that. It's so annoying. Uh, did you see that they put John Cena and Stone Cold in the, on the trucks? Yeah. Yep. I, I think that means absolutely nothing. Those trucks are painted well ahead, at, just as the posters are. They're made well ahead of WrestleMania. So I, I don't – I the, Charlotte's on one too. So, I, you know, does that mean that they're all going to be mm -hmm. there? I, I doubt it. I doubt it. Bailey reminds me of a uh, Jeff Speakman from The Perfect Weapon. Oh my gosh. That was really close. Here we go. No wasted motion. Mm -mm. Josh trying to make his way over to the ropes. Josh swings it around, goes for a pin, and another reversal. Josh gets out of it again and rolls out of it now. Uh, I, that's, nope. that's why I'm over here kind of nervous right now, A. Jobson, because they, because Clemson is uh, letting this game get a little too close uh -oh. for my comfort. So, listen, they I had no expectations of this basketball season for them. The fact that they're in the Sweet 16 is incredible for me. So, if they win or lose, I'm happy. But them going to the Elite Eight obviously would make me very happy. And I might lose my crap on this stream. So, just a, a forewarning there. <laughs> John G, all I will say to that is that they don't normally have surprises at WrestleManias. Oh. Josh gets the win. Woo. Another amazing match from Josh Alexander. Ho hum, it happens every week. <laughs> You know, let me let me ask you this, Joe, because, and I don't want this to sound disrespectful or demeaning because it's not that at all, but it seems like there's a point in time where Josh's matches went from really, really good to what we're seeing every time he's wrestling now. When do you feel like that point was? And I, I want to ask the chat the same thing because it's like he's at a different level um, at this point in his career. I mean, that's a great question, Jeff, because, I mean, when – I mean, you want to say that it started with the first Osprey match, if you want to make it closer to recent. But Josh has been killing it for, like, the last last two two and a half years, three years. Yeah. I mean, remember the match with Macklin and, yeah. uh, you know, back before that, they're going to shake hands. That was a heck of a match, man. Yeah, it really was. Derek saying the Iron Man match. Which one, Derek? You talking about the one against Speedball? Or are you talking about the one oh my against God. TJP? The Speedball match was off the charts. And, and the look TJP. who's here. Yep, Hammerstone picking the bones. Hammerstone is here. Joe, do you remember the TJP match where they started on BTI and it spilled over yep. into the regular show? That's what Derek is saying, that yep. one. Yep. Oh, uh, okay. That's a good theory, too, Heather. Look at I have to hate to say it, but I think Josh is putting out these banger matches because he is shopping around. I think he will be gone when his year option is up. Hammerstone sends his message holding that gear on his arm. 
What's up, Conrad? Hey, Conrad. How are you? So, Conrad, I got to ask you this question. I don't know if you watched that match just then, but I just asked this of Joe in the chat. When do you feel like Josh turned that gear, like flipped the switch, and went from having really, really good matches to what he's doing now? It seems like every time he's out, he's trying to have match of the year contenders. So when do you think that that switched for uh, for Josh? James Chadwick says uh, Josh versus Fatu at Mania Weekend. Bound for Glory versus Osprey. Uh, halfway through Josh's X Division title run, TJP, Will Ospreay, Iron Man match years ago. Um, the North. Wow, Conrad's going back to the North, Jeff. That is a fire cover pro wrestling illustrate. That that's. How about that, man? Congratulations to Mustafa Ali. Uh, gets on the cover of Pro Wrestling Illustrated. Awesome. Awesome. Go subscribe to uh, Everything Pro Wrestling too, folks, if you haven't already. Support Conrad and his channel. Um. <laughs> Not JR doing my Oklahoma impression. They broke the pinata. Is that a new tattoo on Santino's neck? Looks like it. You <laughs> got Rhino. <laughs> oh my God. That's a dumb name. And look who's oh. behind him. Uh oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's behind him. Mr. Rhinoceros. <laughs> Old school rules match? Oh, no rules. <laughs> Santino's all over it. Like, I love that idea. <laughs> Make it so. <laughs> what the hell was that? <laughs> I think it was when he beat. Uh, I think it was when, with Ace Austin for the X Division Championship. Did you know a young Otis was tackled by a security guard after he jumped the barricade trying to high five Trish? I did not. Mike Bailey and Trent Seven in his corner, which is smart. Smart. Is that the link for the uh, PWI, Jeff? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice. That is really the cover, yes. Josh Alexander can guide a refrigerator box to a five star match. All right, so Mike Bailey and Eddie Edwards. There's too much going on this weekend. My friend and I might go see Ghostbusters on Saturday, and there is horror and tattoo con in Nashville. Um, I think I mentioned it on last week's show, but there is that horror movie called Late Night with the Devil, Jeff. That is is yeah. now at a 97% on Rotten Tomatoes. I really Crit want to see it. Critics are saying it. the one critic wrote that it kept him awake the entire night after he saw the, the film. And they are then some of them, some of them are comparing it to being as scary or a, a tad bit scarier than the original Exorcist, which is insane. Yeah. It also, it also means that however curious I am right now, I will probably never, ever, ever watch it. <laughs> <laughs> I I can't believe that. A 97 for a horror film is a insane. Yeah, that is. I'm playing that, this for Daryl too. He knows why. 
<laughs> Guys want to know who you know I can what? have a five star match with. <laughs> uh oh, Clemson's up by two. How close? Well, how much time? They're up 74 70 right now with 25.7 seconds left. Oh, it's almost over. What's the name of it again? Late Night with the Devil. Yeah. Um, it, it takes, it's a period piece. It takes place in 77. Um, and it happens on a late night talk show. Like the guy like idolizes Johnny Carson and he's, and he's trying to make like a talk show similar to his. Um, but he, he comes on like later, uh, you know, so like kind of like when David Letterman came on after, uh, Carson and, and Conan came on later. Uh, so it comes on late at night and the premise of it is he, he brings on a mother and a daughter. And the daughter was apparently the single, um, the single survivor of a uh, of a death of a satanic death cult, and supposedly possessed. And he's talking to the mother. The mother starts talking to the daughter, and the daughter's just kind of sitting there with the long hair over her, the front of her face. And then the mother asks her something, and she gets up. And she starts cracking her shoulder and cracks the other shoulder and moving her joints all over. The, and then she starts talking in this deep, growling type voice. It it looks like it's going to be terrifying. <laughs> it, it looks and, like it's going to be. Clemson's going to the Elite Eight. No, oh, you got the win. That's it's awesome. almost over. There's a few seconds left, but it's they're up 77, 72. And shooting a free throw, 9.8 seconds. That's awesome, dude. Missed the free throw, but I've never seen a five-point shot in basketball. So, And they just missed the three. Clemson dribbles it out. Head it to the Elite Eight. Let's go. That's awesome. Sorry. Speedball Mountain Chance. Uh, now I've heard it all. An AEW mark on Twitter using Taylor Swift as an excuse for AEW not selling enough Wembley tickets. Yeah, I'm not watching that. No, me neither, Derek. <laughs> as curious as I am, uh, and I'll probably read the plot and just to find out exactly what the story was. But yeah, if, they, if they're saying that, they, like these are grown men. Um, the, the one guy that was the critic that wrote it kept him up was like 40 some years old. If that's the case, yeah, no. Let me tell you something about horror films. The ones that took place in the 70s and stuff like that are, are usually terrifying movies. You go back and watch some of the most scary movies you've ever watched. They're period pieces and they all happened in the 70s. The, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the original one. Um, so many other movies. The Exorcist, of course, was 1972. Carrie, the original one, was in the 70s. Those period movies are terrifying because they don't use a lot of special effects. And they and yeah, I I probably won't see it either. If it, if it's if, if it's scarier than the Exorcist, there's no way I'm seeing it. Mm -mm. No, I'll way let I'm you both know how it is. I'll let you both know how it is. Yeah, they're, they're I think it's in the movies uh either now or soon, but it's also gonna be on Shutter. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm waiting for it to come to shutter, but yeah, it, it's gonna be I'm gonna watch. I uh, can't wait for the new go. It's out actually, James, the Ghostbusters movie. Yeah, did you see Jerry Jones note taking at the owners meeting? No. Uh, Arizona lost. The Exorcist scarred me for life. I will never watch it. Yeah, the, I I'm the same way with that. I won't either. I didn't watch the updated one. Where she does the walk down the stairs, I'm like a barrel full of nope, <laughs> nope, <laughs> nope, nope, and nope. Um, the last house on the left. I didn't uh, that movie. I actually like. I watched the original and I watched the remake, and I like both of them. Um, Derek says it still scares me. Yeah, I. Yeah. What is it with demonic possession, dude? You were getting the Omen movie, then this one, and then there's that other one called um, what's the other one? Immaculate. Uh, Immaculate. 
Yeah, like it's what what is it with this? I'm getting you're getting killed. It's all demonic possession stuff. Cabin in the Woods. Cabin in the Woods was good, but it was that had a weird ending. I liked it. It I was so too. different. It, it was very different. Yeah, it was very I different. Liked I liked it. When I first saw the the thing, I was expecting it to be like similar to Evil Dead. Um 1980s. The lodge yeah, was good. Mark. Mark is talking about the last time Clemson made it to the Elite Eight, 1980. Mm, wow, that's so, a long time. Yeah. Um, this is I will know what movie you're referring to. I thought you were talking Oh, there's an old black and white film you guys may know. Uh, I remember as a kid, this guy sold the soul to the devil. In the end, the scene, he came to collect. I watched it with my... Uh, black and white? Hmm. I actually don't. I don't know what that could be, man. I haven't. I don't remember watching very many um, black and white movies growing up. I, especially horror films. I don't know if I ever remember other than like Nosferatu, the original one. Um, I can, I can very much not like the old, the old monster films too, uh, like Frankenstein and Creature from the Black Lagoon and Dracula were all in black and white. But I can never. I don't ever remember seeing a movie like that that was in black and white. Man, people Big hit kicks. all my all my Clemson folks hit me up. Nope, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Dawn of the Dead. Dawn of the Dead was in oh the original um, the original. Night of, the original Night of Living Dead was in black and white. Yeah, that was very creepy too. The original, yeah, very yeah, very was. creepy. Shout out that, to Tom Savini. Dude, the way that movie starts and that and then that person's in the graveyard and then, and then you just from a distance, very yeah. subtly you see that other person walking and walking and then but before you realize it, you start to realize there's something not right. That that person's walking very weird, uh, and then it ends up being a zombie like out of nowhere, and it's like yeah, that movie that movie is freaky. And I thought they would show the matches. Uh, I thought they would show the matches, not talk about them. Yeah, Ken, we don't want to get fined. Thank you very much. Yeah, I don't, we don't want to go to jail. Yeah. Thank you very much. It's a watch along, sir. A watch along. That means you watch along with us. Sorry to disappoint. Just turned 55 and have never seen The Exorcist all the way through. Speedball. Outside the ring now, look out. Ah, there's where the interference might come in. Ooh, almost had uh, Eddie hit Brian Myers there. Got out of the way. And now Bailey in the air takes out Myers. And watch out. You got Lish over there. You got Myers over there. Eddie is down. I thought people could read. And apparently not always. <laughs> Apparently not always. You know when CM Punk said to Drew, uh, who chose you as the chosen one, as the chosen one, what's his what's his name? And the look Drew gave after Punk went <laughs> off script. It was not planned at all. We got the old pipe on Punk on Raw. <laughs> I love it. I think that was a lot of people's reaction. <laughs> Agreed. Uh, the Friday 13th episode with the bees. Only thing that scared me as a kid. Are you talking about the series? Friday 13th, the series? I like that series. Back then. Yeah, I liked it too. It was good. My mom saw it in 77 when it came out when she was pregnant with me. The Pope's Exorcist is super scary. Yeah, I wouldn't watch that either. <laughs> There's no way I'll watch any of these new movies with uh, possession stuff because they could just do way too much of special effects. And it's even it makes it even that much more creepy. Um, Joe, would you ever make a bet that put that on the line, where you'd have if you lost, you'd have to watch one of those movies? The bet would have to be a very, very, very good one in my favor. <laughs> 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 
Get all the kicks from Mike Bailey. Uh, the original Exorcist made me crap my pants. My dad is 55 and is still scared of it. Yeah. Yeah. It, it was, like I said, Derek, I think a lot of it is because of the aesthetics and the way it was shot. Because, they again, they had to use practical effects. They couldn't use, they didn't have all this technology. So, and it, they, it was very creepy. Like if you, you go like, it's talking about Shudder. If you go to Shudder and look up some of the older films, like the ones from the seventies, there, there was a, a movie from the seventies called magic, which had Roddy McDowell. And he was, and he was up, he was a puppeteer and he had this old school wooden puppet and the puppet was like either possessed by the spirit. Or, oh my God. Terrifying. A, a, a terrifying movie. Uh, a film, look up a film called Taurus Trap. You want to watch a creepy oh, yeah. ass movie, dude? Yeah. Creepy as hell. And and even I'll tell you something, the 74 Texas Chainsaw Massacre probably has one of the best endings and most terrifying endings of all of all time in horror films. Taurus Trap has one too. Um, and very, very Texas Chainsaw like at the end of that movie. That was another one that terrified the hell out of me. They 70s films are just scary, they're just scary. So, yeah, just they're just scary. Bailey up on top. And Eddie's down, but he misses with the knees. Lands square on his knees in a Boston knee party, and that might be it. Yep, Eddie Edwards gets the win. Mistake there by Mike Bailey. Hmm. And Eddie Edwards wins. Only silent film in that genre I can remember. I love the old black and whites. Apparently, a lot of people backstage got a bit nervous, but settled down once it continued to where it meant uh, where it meant to go. Punk face has no consequences for it. Um, Friday Thirteenth, a series episode about the dentist with the electric chair. Awesome episode. I was so disappointed when that series came out at first because I really thought with the logo it was going to be a Jason series, and then when I found out it was basically a Twilight Zone with artifacts i liked it though i didn't hate it um but i was just very disappointed when it first came on and i was expecting to see something about jason monsters ball yes monsters ball match oh pco bring the kitchen sink baby <laughs> let's go Monsters Ball match. James Chadwick, Monsters Ball. Uh, what is this? Welcome to Italy. Uh, is this Fandango? What is this? Getting like a uh, FBI? What? FBI's on next week? Wow. Oh, well, they are in Philly. That makes sense. Uh, Frankie Kazarian. I hate Taurus Trap. That movie messed with my head. Chuck Connors being all, yeah, that's that movie was terrifying. That went when he the, the the kill in that movie when he's when he's pouring that stuff on that girl's face, mm -hmm. dude, incredibly freaky. And Chuck Connors and Chuck Connors is a big dude, and and him being in, the, I'm sure that took a lot of stuff from Texas Chainsaw. Um, just because of the way it was done and how he dressed up and looked like a woman a little bit with that costume he wore. Um, I'm sure a lot of it was taken from that, but it was terrifying. Mr. Kennedy. Kennedy. <laughs> What's up, man? Guido. We get to see Guido? I know. ABC, I'll beat you in one, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> that was smooth. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, here we go. Now we're going to hear from Rich Swan about what he did to uh, to Joe Hendry. Kaz quoting Psalms is unexpected. Um, 
He was suffocating her with wax. But yeah, I know. Uh, yeah, he was trying to make her into a mannequin. He was like, he, that was terrifying too. When they walked into that house and they saw those mannequins all over the place. Yeah, that, yeah. that, that movie's terrifying, dude. It is. It really is. Terrifying. One, of those, one of those 80s horror movies that's like just a <laughs> hidden gem that not a lot of people have seen, especially. Yeah. You know, especially folks today, a lot of horror fans today really haven't seen it. It's it was on Shutter. It probably still is, I'd imagine. It is, yeah, it is. Terrifying. You know what else was terrifying in those movies, Jeff? Was the soundtracks. The music made those films. Um, because you like John Carpenter did the Halloween score, the music made those films uh, creep absolutely creepy. Yeah. Music was like another character. It in the absolutely movie. was. Yep. Thick thighs and pretty eyes. <laughs> My man, AJ Francis. Oh! He took a shot at the Eagles. Mm. Kind of like that. <laughs> <laughs> not not going to lie. Kind of like that. <laughs> oh, I kind of like it. Rich Swan is what a sober flavor. What was that? A sober flavor flav looks like. <laughs> <laughs> Who said that? <laughs> Who said that? Derek. Who, oh. who else? <laughs> That's <Who fact>. <laughs> That's <fact>. <laughs> I can't unsee it now. Oh my god. <laughs> he kind of really does. Hey. Oh my god. <laughs> Leave it to Derek, man. Leave it to Derek. <laughs> Watch Swamp of the Ravens, another late 70s, uh, 80s flick. It was warped. Joe is hyped. The FBI, I, I am. I am. I, I, I'm excited to see the FBI. AJ just confirmed, too. I know. Flav of Flav. Yeah, boy. Now, if he comes out with a clock next time, I'm blaming oh all of Oh, my God. But imagine if he came out with a big clock on a chain. Oh, that would be I'm blaming tremendous. all y'all. <laughs> oh, that would be amazing. Swan needed a character change. Yeah, I, I'm pretty excited for this. Excited for a new Beetlejuice? Yes, of course. Yeah, it looks amazing. I, I'll definitely be going to see that in the theater. Swan just looks like a turncoat trader to me now. All right, I'm a. <laughs> Swan looks like he was on on one of the the biker teams and uh whatever biker boys the bi that movie. <laughs> if you guys have ever seen that movie, he looks like he was <laughs> one of the folks and biker boys back in the day. All we need now is Willie Mack to return to give us that long needed Swan versus Mack feud. Look. <laughs> Rich Swan dancing. Cavs going heel, Rich going heel. MCMG, my heart just can't take all of this. It's been a rough few months for Heather, man. Yeah, right. All you need now is a Bully Ray return at the uh, at Rebellion. Oh Rebellion. man, no, don't put that in the universe. <laughs> Bully did say he's not done on the radio the one day. The desire and the fire. Wow. 
Wow. Said no to the fans. I don't need any of you. Idiots in the crowd. <laughs> TNAJ Francis and Homie Swan. <laughs> money, 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 money. Bates money. now has super nuclear heat. <laughs> Felicia dethroned Moose and beat Bruno's reign. <laughs> Homie Swan, seriously? Swan needed this change. His character was stale. Jason Dawn. I like it. Yeah, I like it. I think it's cool. Yeah, Swan, I think, I agree. I think Swan needed a change. I like it. Now you got to wonder, Jeff, who is, uh, who's Joe Hendry going to recruit? If they, if they're a tag team, unless they're just going to stay single wrestlers for a little while, but if they're, who is uh, Joe Hendry going to get on his side? Not to get Heather's hopes up. But what if they were able to pull it off, Joe, and get you your back? Oh, man. If they became, oh, yeah, that would be awesome. Maybe they just needed some time to do it. Laredo Kid. Joey needs you. Yeah, maybe. Nah. Macklin and Saban next. Yeah, yeah, I guess that's the main event. We've had a heck of a night. Yeah. Surprising winner of the uh, 841 match. We've had Matt Cardona, an appearance by Matt Cardona. Joya. Yeah, that'd be awesome if he came back. Here's a guy who's just been really, really good. He's been on so many, uh, so many episodes of Impact of TNA and Impact that we've seen over the years, um, and really never got, you know, really never got much attention. So I'm kind of glad to see he's getting this little bit of time. Grado, it's yourself. <laughs> a girl can dream, Heather. Levels of heat, normal heat, Enzo heat, X Pac heat, nuclear heat, Bully Ray winning a belt heat. Yeah, that that was, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, when he had a. When he almost passed away. Laredo kid. Yeah. Man. I wonder if they're going to do more with him when it comes to the X division going forward. Yeah, they very well might. I like these segments, though, where, where they're sitting down with talent and kind of getting to know the folks. I, I like that. Next week. Must have fall Lee and Rhino. Kind of makes sense they're doing this because they're giving all the old Philly guys their due here. 
Frankie Kazarian takes on Chris Bay. No, he was he was uh, he had a perforated intestine. He was he that was a while ago. He's okay now. Um but yeah, it it was um that was scary. Next week's looking good too. All right, it's Steve Macklin. Laredo and Crazy Steve. Now I'm worried for Laredo. Joe, do you think Macklin gets back in the title picture this year? Do you think that might not be in the cards for him this year? I mean... I don't know if it'll be this year. I guess, I mean, he could. It depends on, it really depends, Jeff, on whether or not they take the title off Moose. If it's Nick Nemeth, then I could see it. Because they already kind of had a little feud between the two of them anyway. So it would kind of make sense and it would come like full circle. So that I could see. Saban and Macklin. Give Nick the title and feud with Steve. John Kessler saying Steve has to resign. I think his contract is up in May. Yeah, that's uh if Macklin would leave, I would imagine he would leave because of where Deanna is. If if he would have a chance to go there, um, then I would imagine that he would probably want to join his wife. So we'll see. We will see because that's usually wrestling couples. You know, they like to be in the same place. This way they could travel together and all that kind of stuff. It's just easier for them. Yeah, here, here's a question I would have for folks that watch AEW pretty regularly. To, to a Jobson's point, where do you think if Steve Matt, let's say that Steve Macklin makes that decision and he ends up going to AEW or Ring of Honor. Where do you think he fits in in that roster? Where where do you think his place is on that roster? That's what some of the people are saying in the chat. He'd be lost right. in the crowd. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's a, that's a loaded roster. Um, it really is. It, it, the very, very loaded roster, so I don't know. That's a... Uh, it's a good question, and I'm not I'm not sure he would. And that's no no offense to him at all. It's just that they've got a lot of talent there that already get a lot of playing time. So I I don't know. It's a great question. How much do you think Killer Kelly would cha charge me to let her walk on me? Oh, God. Oh my God, dude. 
<laughs> oh my god, dude. <laughs> Derek, you are awful. <laughs> He's so <laughs> bad, dude. He's so bad. Saban takes Macklin's knees out, and down he goes. Saban now focusing on that injured one. Roster is too blooming big, and I'm an AEW fan. Not enough time in the week for that roster. People regularly watch AEW, only joking. I think it probably the ROH TV title division. Uh oh. Dirty Derek. <laughs> Arms don't bend that way, typically. No. Yeah, no, they do not. Uh, I would bet AEW. AEW world title. Good grief. Good God. Bischoff just went uh, after Tony Khan big time about Dynamite ratings. Man. <clears throat> Some days I'm really glad I'm not on uh, X. <laughs> You're not missing anything. And my slogan is if it ain't dirty, it ain't me. <laughs> Derek, you need a shirt for that. You do, yeah. You need a t shirt with that on there. Uh I think Tony Khan would send Macklin to ROH since the AEW roster is so crowded. Nice move there from Macklin. Hung them out to dry. Um, we don't get picture in picture. No, we do not. No picture in picture here. What's up, Isaac? How are you? Uh, would he fit in ROH AEW? Absolutely. Would he be champ in a year? Probably not, but neither is Mark Briscoe. TK started it at 4 a.m. last night after the ratings. Uh, EB went finish him. <laughs> Tom Phillips said, shocking a guy from New Jersey not making a lot of friends in Philly. <laughs> <laughs> Chris Saban down. EB always has something negative to say. Woo. Big chop from Mac. Chop. Off the ropes, coming back around. Reversal there. Now Saban trying to gets the triangle. Ooh. Ooh. Macklin just taking Chris Saban to a woodshed and just beat yeah, the crap he out really of is. Guys ready for Mania? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. It's getting to be that time, man. I, I'll it's say this. I'm, I typically, like, I do get excited some years for WrestleMania. This is probably the most anticipated. This is probably the most I've looked forward to Mania in a long time. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be a really fun one. That's what? Not this coming uh, weekend, but the following, right? So two weeks? Yep. Next weekend. We have, uh, obviously, SmackDown tomorrow night, then one more Raw, and then one more SmackDown, and then, yeah. That's crazy. It is, man. It's... And the build has been really good. I mean, not just the, the bloodline stuff, but everything. Yep. 
has been really good. So I'm I'm looking forward to it more so than than I have in the last several years, and that's and they've done a got a, a good job the last several years too. Yeah. There are teams that can bring in all the caliber of Motor City Machine Guns, but something to fill the space. Conrad is correct. DB made multiple appearances on AEW. He has no room to talk. <clears throat> Guys like him and Vince Russo are always going to talk. That's what they do. get people listen so you know they're always going to be just biting Macklin's head oh did he not did he not like catering okay he might <laughs> he didn't get he didn't get fed well I stocked the fridge full of beer and the freezer full of food for mania that's how hype mania has got me this year Sorry, I saw a point made. If people would uh, hold other companies this accountable, Gomez would have been shut down. Hogan made one dumbass comment, but hey ho, I'm done. Back to TNA. <laughs> oh, covering a kick out there from Macklin. Ooh, big neck breaker by Saban. Saban looking good right now. Looking good right now. It's crazy how I mean all the years in the business and he's still he's still just as good as he's ever been. Yeah. Titus Williams would be uh great to bring in. You could reform the foundation and maybe get Gresham to regain his smile and come out from under his bed. I was gonna I was gonna ask that if they could reform the foundation in TNA since I mean we are it seems like it is the year of the faction, so could yeah. we get another one? You see that uh shot in the background Monday they purposely showed rock and stone cold during that beatdown on Cody might mean something, might not. Yeah, a lot of people are kind of talking about that. I don't know. I don't know if it means anything. Saving his I'd, like I'd like it if it if it meant something. I understand people's struggles with it. Um, saving outside the ring. Callahan versus Josh would have been fantastic. Macklin up. One, oh. two, no. Kick out a two. Good match here between these two. You guys can ignore what I'm typing. <laughs> I have friends who it hurt because they loved Hogan. Yeah, I'm sure, dude. It was disappointing. Yeah. I have a lot of thoughts about Hogan. Yeah. Everyone has done or said something stupid in their life. No one is a paragon of virtue, but hey, back to TNA. They, oh, my God. What a clothesline. Lays out Chris Saban. Macklin now gaining some momentum here. Got Saban up. That mm -hmm. might do might it. Do it. Two. Nope. Kicked out of two. Man. Macklin, man. He's another guy that I think could 
very well maybe in another year or so be seen as one of these guys who has some incredible matches. Oh, yeah. Oh. Saban just telling him to hit him. Except Kimberly. Kimberly is a saint. <laughs> Who am I kidding? She can go fiddle herself. <laughs> Dang. Mate. Oh my god, dude. <laughs> that is the nicest way I heard somebody to say I, yep, yeah, I, <laughs> Wow, Macklin hit the floor. Oh. Macklin hit the floor. Look at this. This completely got out of the way. Macklin is someone who I feel got robbed of his title reign. I don't disagree with that, Conrad. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was cut cut short. Yeah, he probably should have had more. Yeah. Sammy just put so much into everything he did here and clearly loved doing it. Unfortunately, they couldn't come to an agreement. Yeah. Never never say never, A, eh? and never say never that they might not bring him back at some point someday. Especially if they start losing people. You know, if you lose a, if you lose the, you're well, obviously they're losing Motor City. If you lose anybody else, if Josh ends up walking, that's a huge blow, and and they may need to cushion that with like some people that were with them before. Um, Sammy doesn't replace Josh, obviously, but you Ooh. know they 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 may look into bringing him back. Yeah, I mean, these two guys are going to be very much missed here. They're both a, a tremendous yeah. wrestler. Both tremendous. Saban and Shell. It's going to be it's going to be sad not seeing them. Well, I mean, ever since we've been doing these watch-alongs, they've been such a big part of the show. All those battles, Jeff, with these two against the North. Oh, man. Dude. That, that brought my interest back to tag team wrestling after all these years. Yeah. It really did. The level of tag team wrestling that we got to see when we first started this watch along, man, some of those matches just, just so freaking good. I mean, you had the good brothers, you had the machine guns, you had the North just good, just quality tag team wrestling every week. Oh, Hey. Steve Macklin, Joe. Macklin wins. Big time for Steve Macklin. Macklin wins. Oh, Saban goes out on his back. I, I don't know that that would be – well, we don't know. We don't know if that's going to be their last match. Um, and if so, Heather, like I said earlier in the, in the show, I think that that could very well be because – um, Chris Saban wants to put someone over, um, and he probably respects what Steve Macklin's doing um, enough to do that. So that's a that's a big thing for him. Uh, that's a big win for him uh, to get under his belt and to say that they that he beat that you know he he beat Chris Saban. Uh, so I think that's just a case of one guy knows he's leaving and he wants to 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 put up a, a younger guy over. Um, and I think that's a that that could be what well, that could be one of those things at some point where Macklin looks back uh, on that and uh, and and that could be a turning point in his career. It really could be. So that it, it you know it it's, could be very very big thing for him um, that that happens. So um, yeah yeah, I'm all right with it. I'm all right with it. Yeah, no, I know. Everybody, everybody's distraught about them leaving. Yeah, I, I'm not happy about it either. It kind of sucks, but 
you know, what are you going to do? As I've always said, you know, the, the, the wrestlers have to do what's going to make them happy. Um, and, you know, if they want to move on for whatever reason, um, they want to explore their, their opportunities. And like I said, maybe it's not to go to AEW. Maybe they want to go like uh, the Good Brothers did. Maybe they want to follow in their path a little bit. And maybe they want to go to, uh, maybe they want to go to, you know, New Japan and, and do some time in New Japan for a little bit. Um, which would be, you know, pretty exciting, I would assume, for them if that's what they want. Uh, so, yeah, yeah. I don't necessarily think it's a lock that they're going to be in AEW. I, I know people might assume that because they've been there before. Um, they had that one match there and stuff like that. And like I said, I, I you know, I don't know. I don't know. Um, they, they do. AEW is, is very loaded with people right now. They have a lot of people on that roster. So I'm not too sure. Um, I mean, I, their tag team division is is kind of loaded too, so I don't know. I don't know. I guess it's a, we'll have to just wait and see um, where they end up. But uh, wherever it is, they're going to finish their career there, I would imagine. And um, you know, I don't know. Look, AEW did a great job with the with the way they finished out Sting's career. So yeah, you know, I mean, if they do that with the uh, with the machine guns, yeah, I'm all right with that. They deserve it. All right. Um, just dropping by to say hi. Hey, Swack fan, how are you? Good show tonight. Uh, A says nine out of ten. John G says nine out of ten. Dylan says nine out of ten. I can um, Motor City Machine Gun doing what the Hardys did, go around the Indies. AW needs to boost the tag division. Yeah. So I mean, they, they could do it. Mister Kennedy, Kennedy out of ten. <laughs> <laughs> They'd be an asset to WWE. Yeah, yeah, they would. I, WWE just to me doesn't seem to, they don't seem to sign. I mean, the, the Jay Cargill signing was huge, but they don't seem to do a lot of that. And I, and I don't know that they're going to, they're going to do it now. You know, like, I don't know. Um, I, I, I don't know. They could, but I, I, but I don't know. New Japan could use them too. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why TNA needs Anthem to elevate it. WWE and, e, WWE and AEW are loaded. Uh, hope the machine guns get a big bucket of money. Yeah, they deserve it. They deserve it. Good stuff tonight. Uh, we had some surprises, like I said. Um, we, we got some cool stuff uh, that happened in that women's match. Not exactly sure why Ash wasn't involved. I'm, I'm a little surprised by that. I don't know if we're going to find out that there was maybe some sort of, a, of an injury that maybe happened with her. I, I don't know. But I was a little surprised by that, unless they just wanted to wait and didn't pull the trigger on her right away, which is fine. Um, and, and, you know, give that opportunity to somebody else. Um, like, you know, slow burn is good. Uh, 9.5 out of 10. Have a great weekend, everyone. I don't know if Anthem is doing that. 8.75 out of 10. 7 out of 10. I'm missing the backstage stuff. Hope it returns. Uh, what made impact fun. The machine guns will end up in TNA hall of fame. Says John Kessler. We'll see. We'll see. All right. Yeah. We're going to give you our scores. Nine out of 10 for Andrew Stevens. Uh, I thought it was a good, I thought it was a good one. We had a surprise match for Josh Alexander that came out of nowhere. Uh, we had the system still looking good. Uh, we had Macklin versus Saban. The, uh, the the match we just saw was really good. The 8-4-1 match which was really good. Um, we had some good stuff in the back um, with, uh, of course, uh, Santino Morella is always fun to see back there and stuff. Uh, so, yeah, no, I thought it was good. I thought it was good. Um, I'm going to say I'm going to give it an 8.75. I think that's a fair score for tonight. I, I, I thought it was good. I liked it. I thought it was good. Uh, another great show. Have a great weekend. If you celebrate Easter, happy Easter. See you next week. Jeff, uh, what are you scoring tonight's show? Yeah, I'm, I think I'm going to be around there, around an 8.5, 8.75. I think, you know, it was it was a good show. Um, I I think that, you know, with, with the machine guns leaving, obviously you think about what's next and who can step up. Um, you know, I'm looking at folks like Kevin Knight. Um, hopefully they, they, they give him an opportunity to shine a little bit more. Um, the eight, four, one match was great. I, I did not see Steph Delander winning, <laughs> uh, but I think that's an interesting matchup, Joe, because you brought up a very good point with her and Matt Cardona having a lot of history in the past. So mm -hmm. could that come into play when, uh, Steph gives, uh, Miss that opportunity, so we'll we'll see. But I think it's, you know, another good show. Really enjoyed yeah. it. Yeah, 
Yeah, yeah. Who knows? She has to. Jordan might have to have an eye in the back of her head with that one because if he does, he's not adverse to hitting women. Um, he comes in and, and you know decks her. He could uh, he could have a could have a, a change of a championship. Good night, everyone. Good night, Heather. Can't wait till next week's show. Uh, Michael King said, "Give it an eight. Yeah, listen, I thought it was a good show, and um, yeah. So there you go. We are going to finish it up here for the night. Um, yes, as all of you are already saying, uh, it is Easter weekend. If you if you indeed celebrate Easter. Uh, have a great Easter and a great holiday. Um, enjoy that time with your family and your friends. Um, please make it a safe one. Please stay safe uh, wherever you happen to be. Um, please always be kind to one another. And hopefully we'll see you all for our next one. Now, we'll let you know um, when that will be. Uh, we'll get the schedules out and stuff like that. Um, I'm, I'm not 100% sure what we're doing yet as far as the, the whole thing with the documentary. Because, again, we just don't know. Yeah. Uh, we just don't know. We don't know when it's going to release. Um, so if they keep that quiet and it doesn't release in the morning, which I kind of don't, I, I kind of don't think it will. I have a very odd feeling that they may release that after Raw, um, which would uh, would kind of seem like it would make sense um, because they could still kind of advertise it on the show a little bit and stuff. So I, I kind of think that's, I don't think it's going to be released during the day, but we'll, we'll see if it is again, you know, we all, and we all work that day. Uh, well, Jeff works that day. Jody works that day. So it's not going to be, uh, you know, we're not going to be able to do anything with it if they release it during the day, cause everybody's going to watch it anyway. So, um, but there will be, uh, an Abby's abode that will cover it. I I'll just say that they, uh, that Jeff and Jody at some point will cover that. Um, but, but we'll keep you, you know, we'll keep you notified. We'll let you know. Um, I'm sure I'll be on the X and I'll let everybody know what's going on. But other than that, we won't see you again until, uh, this show next Thursday next. And then the, that Thursday is going to be big. Uh, number one, you're going to want to be here for more than one reason. We have a return for that night and that's going to be, uh, coming on the show. Uh, so you'll want to be here for that. And then obviously next, uh, the, the next weekend is uh, WrestleMania and, uh, we'll be doing both nights. And me and my luchador mask. So uh, <laughs> get ready. We got some big weekends coming up. Uh, so there you go. All right, guys, we're done. Have a great holiday. And hopefully we'll talk to you all on the next one. Have a good night, everybody. And we'll talk to you soon.